Dr. Shannon M. Clark here. I am a double board certified OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine specialist. And there is a post circulating on social media from another OBGYN about five things you should ask your surgeon for when undergoing a cesarean section. I'm going to go through each one of those five things and give you my two cents. Number one, a single layer closure of the uterine incision or a double layer closure or imbricating stitch on the uterine incision. The optimal way to close the uterus, one or two layers, the type of stitch, the way we do the stitch, unclear. There is a multi-center randomized trial, including nearly 2,300 patients undergoing a first cesarean birth that was published recently this year. They found that single layer closure using non-locking sutures resulted in similar gynecologic and obstetric outcomes as a double layer closure at three years follow-up. So when you look at the totality of the evidence, it, sh it seems that a single layer closure or a double layer closure is perfectly acceptable um, when you have your cesarean section. In fact, I do cesarean sections routinely and I rarely do a double layer closure. Point number two, closure of the rectus abdominis muscles. Here you can see the two bellies of the rectus abdominis muscles that go down the front of your abdomen. When we go in to deliver the fetus, we go into the linea alba here in the midline and we separate those muscles to get into the abdomen to the uterus to, to deliver the fetus. We should never be cutting those muscles unless we absolutely have to, which is rarely needed. Um, but the point that she's making in her video is that after everything is done and then we're closing up, that we should put the bellies of those rectus muscles back together. Now studies have shown that putting those muscle bellies back together actually increases post-operative pain and could potentially lead to increased bleeding as well or hematoma formation. I do not put the muscles back together after or during a C-section for a couple of reasons. Number one, I do believe it increases pain if you're stitching those muscles back together because you're sitting up and down and trying to heal and plus those stitches can tear. And if you tear the muscle, you can get a hematoma and even bleeding into the abdomen, which we don't want. Now there is a layer of peritoneum on the back side of the rectus abdominis muscles that I will sometimes put back together. Reapproximating those two bellies of muscle is not gonna give you the same result or anything similar to having a tummy tuck. Nor does it prevent the overhang. The overhang is typically composed of additional subcutaneous or fatty tissue that's in between the muscle, and uh, sorry, the skin and the fascia. Point number three, closing this subcutaneous fat layer, and that's the layer between the skin itself and the fascia, the fatty layer of tissue. We do, and I do, close that layer if it's thicker than two centimeters, greater than or equal to two centimeters. When the subcutaneous layer is greater than two centimeters and you don't close that space, um, there is increased risk of fluid accumulation and a seroma formation. Point number four, closing the skin with sutures and not staples. We close, and I close, the skin with suture. When we close the skin with suture, there are less postoperative wound complications. Point number five is giving the patient an additional bag of Pitocin after delivery of the fetus during a cesarean section. The evidence does support that, um, but there's no real uh, consensus on the amount, uh, the concentration of Pitocin, or for how long to administer it. Where I work, we do it the same after a spontaneous V-A-G-A-N-A-L delivery and for cesarean birth. Now, I chose to address uh, this, this topic about the five things you should ask of your surgeon doing your cesarean because I don't want people thinking that if their surgeon does not do numbers one and two, that they're a bad surgeon. The evidence actually doesn't support numbers one and two.